following along, I've been doing these videos in sequence. The November theme or the theme for this month is picking a good property to renovate. It's everyone's, oh, it's a question I just get asked all the time is how do I know which one is a good one, which has got potential, which one I should leave, which one I should jump in, how am I going to make the changes, how am I going to save money, those kinds of questions. So finding a really good property to renovate is the first thing that you need to focus on. But do you decide on your renovation strategy with week one? If you haven't watched these videos, go back and watch them. Week two was identifying a good location. Week three is taking a really detailed look on the property itself. And now once you've found the property itself and perhaps you've bought the property itself, now like what do you do with it? How do we even know where to start? People make it seem so simple when they talk about renovating for profit. And you see all these success stories everywhere and you think, how do they even know where to start, what to do, what to leave, um, what's worthwhile doing, what they shouldn't touch, like what makes a good renovation and what makes a terrible renovation. But the fact that you're here, guys, makes me really excited because I think that what makes a terrible renovation is when someone jumps in and doesn't give three minutes of thought. When someone jumps into a property and they just assume that they're going to put the same boring flooring down, the same 300 by 600 white tiles in a bathroom and, and, and a vanity from Bunnings with the same old taps, that kind of renovation that is boring really doesn't cut it anymore. The bar's been lifted. The bar's been lifted. You are starting, though, with a different product every time you renovate. Like here's a variety of homes that I just grabbed off realestate.com.au. Really quickly, you can see how different all of these homes are. So which ones do you buy? And when you buy them, what do you do with those properties? Beforehand, last week, we talked about going through and working out what a good property looks like. And I actually did mention that when you're standing on the street, you have to make sure that the property looks handsome like it kind of is attractive in a way. I look at the front of this little property here and I think that's a bit of a cutie. But when you get further into the property, and this one's actually already been renovated substantially inside, but when you get around the back, there are a few things that they could have done to take that property just a little bit further. I always think you take a property as far as you can if it's something that's not going to cost you a lot to do. And the number one thing that doesn't cost you a lot to do and takes your property furthest is paint. Number one is colour. So you're looking for a handsome kind of shape. You're looking for potential in the shape of a property. Like I see modern farmhouse when I see that old A-frame property. I see that, hey, with some, you know, colour bond mat and a few different things to that facade, you could really give that a real modern farmhouse look without doing the obvious and most expensive thing, which is changing the roof line. I look at that and I think, okay, I know that that property is in the country. So I'd really play up that front veranda. I think the bricks, as much as um, bricks are acceptable, when you do something like paint a brick, you really lift the colour and you, and you make something feel fresh and new. Texture is really in and painted brick is really in. So even in the country, I consider painting a brick, especially if you're going to do a quick cosmetic renovation to sell. If you're going to live in that home, knowing that you're going to have to paint that brick every 10 years, you might not bother doing it for a little while. But if you're going to sell it, sell it when the bricks are freshly painted. I mean, you look at the front of that and how fresh it looks, and that's because the bricks are done. I look at that property and I think, uh oh, um, not a lot of fancy stuff going on, not a lot of pretty stuff going on here. You know, is it worth it? Is there any hope? You have to look at properties and go, okay, do they have a certain flavor? Can I make them beautiful? Can I actually bring them up into a, a, a style that's going to be attractive for a buyer. And to do that, is it going to cost me a bomb? Is it going to cost me too much? Or can I just um, do a few small changes? There are some obvious ones here. Like, look at that. That is just, oh, God, I hope this is, I hope you know, no one's watching who's selling this property. 
but that's pretty ordinary. You know, as soon as you start to change all of this front, the, the decoration on the front, that's going to make a substantial difference to how welcoming that property becomes. I see the driveway is old and scrappy. So perhaps get the driveway treated, painted, or do something with the driveway at the very least, give it a really good steam clean. I look at that. Yes, it's got a tidy garden, but the garden's really dated. That seems to sit in nowhere land, doesn't have much of a purpose. So if you're going to leave that there, you need to play it up and make that a really beautiful feature do more with this front entry and then when you get down here you've got this weatherboard look which is great rip off that that needs to go and you need to do something really awesome with this front entry the color is really dated as well so what are you starting with what can you do to that kind of property i see arches everywhere some i'd leave some i'd get rid of i'm not really a fan of this look here um, with the um the, the traditional old Mediterranean tiles on the carport there. So I'll be thinking about doing something like that. I may not rip out those arches, especially the front door arch. I'll be playing that up like a champion because these are in right now. That awning's got to go. So anything that makes your place look or a place look really dated, stand back and go, okay, that can go. But what can I do with it? What does it come to me with? Um, Colour's the best thing to change. What is its existing style and what can I take that style to? I see a lot of Federation style homes being sold around my area. I live near the beach. The first thing I'd be doing with a Federation home is I'd be looking at the shape of it and the style and go, can I Hampton set up? Can I change the vibe? Because quite often the roof line is a really similar vibe. Can I just change it? Can I completely paint it? Can I pull out of the Brunswick green and the maroons and the creams and replace them with whites and light blues and all those gorgeous Hamptons colours? So it's what are you starting with and what is the easiest transition to make is the key. When you, when you get really good at seeing beyond what's there, then you'll nail this, guys, and it's really teachable and it's actually really learnable. It's like, um, <laughs> like our kids, I, I don't know why I use this analogy a lot, but our kids, you expect them all to be the same, but man, they're so different. They're really different to each other. Every house you grab is going to be different. But like our kids, you're starting with what you're given. You can't change everything. You can kind of guide and recorrect and try and, you know, bring along, but you really just can't change what's within. And the same with these renovated homes. You've just got to guide and correct and, and you know, pretty up best you can. All right. Where you need to finish is the key. That's what you need to focus on. It's like, what have you got? Where you need to have, where, where you need to head. What are the designs that sell? Right, farmhouse style and homes in the bush. If you've got a, a home in the bush, I'd be thinking about really creating that farmhousey vibe. If you've got a home in the bush, like I look at that and I think that is a cottage on, in the Blue Mountains, somewhere like that, where there's, you know, trees and forests and there's bricks and there's colourbond roofs and there's beautiful windows that are open to the view and all that kind of stuff. So it's what you've got, where you're heading. This is it, guys, where you see that um, picture there from Inst Instagram from Studio Black and this one here from Code uh, K Mode Interiors. That's enough. Like that kind of renovation, that kind of vibe is enough. You really don't have to go over the top, but you have to create something beautiful like this. This is not boring, but it is enough. So, I, I mean, I just randomly grabbed those pictures because I think they're typical of the type of renovation you should head towards, how far you should take things in the interior. Um, but also the exterior, let's take a look at a few of the other styles. Mediterranean modern, it's really in at the moment, in vogue. If interior designers and architects are building archways into brand new buildings, if there are project home companies, display home companies, now with a whole range of these modern Mediterranean houses, if you end up with a house with an arch, you do not feel compelled or don't feel compelled to rip it out, play it up, go with it. Like take a look at the homes that you see on display and the homes that you see in magazines and go, how can I get my dated 70s home to look like that? What do I need to do? Like really look at the photos that you see on Instagram and pull all of the features apart and really take a look at the skirting boards and the architraves and the cornices and, and don't be just 
sold by the furnishings, like really start to pull apart um, mentally what's in those pictures and that will give you a place to start. Character homes, always sell really, really well. So don't rip out the character, play up the character, but think about adding some modern features so that they don't feel old and dated. So it's a beautiful blend of character plus that modern feel, that newness. Camp, uh, Hamptons and Coastal, again, like I was talking about the Federation home, if you're anywhere near the coast, a Hamptons and a Coastal home with the coastal vibe sells like hotcakes, really easy to put together, really simple. Start to add a little bit of VJ here and there. You'll get there in a heartbeat. Even VJ in uh, uh, um, country areas or um, out in the bush with a little bit of like that and that photograph. And, you know, the gumboots say it all, just the styling. Like you can really push the styling to sell the mood and the flavour of a home. Queenslanders, love Queenslanders. If you buy a Queenslander to renovate, you better like painting. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. They're absolutely gorgeous. But you better like painting because there's a lot of painting to do in a Queenslander. Scandy houses. I think Scandy vibe has kind of been and gone just a little bit, but, you know, what we take from it is light and bright and airy and breezy and calm, nice neutral colours. Modern contemporary, your average Joe house, like your average suburban house, your three-bedroom brick boring house can be really transformed very easily just by modernising, bringing in more whites, rendering walls or perhaps painting bricks, looking at your window covers, um, you know, pulling off old heavy, heavy curtains and just putting nice blinds, plantation shutters if appropriate for the area and if the house can carry them. Um, and if your budget can carry them, but, you know, just really streamlined blinds some really nice white shears will get you a really nice modern, calm, contemporary house that will sell very well. Mid-century modern is really on trend at the moment. I, if you push it too far with a mid-century modern style, you actually do risk polarising some buyers. So like I'm always saying, just, you know, go with what you really love and pair it back just a little bit. You really just want this vibe. You want people to walk through and go, that's lovely. That's what, the, that's really nice. I can picture myself living in here. This is nice. That's what you want them to say. If you're out to super impress people, that's great. You'll impress some, but you won't impress all. Some people will be a little bit distracted by what you put together. Uh, Deco. This building here is the old Commonwealth Bank in Cronulla. It is, and behind it are some new units. This is the original facade. Every time I walk past that building, I'm, I'm absolutely in awe of the design, the architectural design. I have memories of walking in there to the Commonwealth Bank as a child. I remember the old tiles at the front and the little ramp. You walk up the stairs here, but there was a little ramp at the side there into the other entry. Anybody local will remember it too. And what they did so beautifully well is they kept the character and the flavour of that building. They added new apartments to the back. It got awards. It's just so beautifully done. So Art Deco Modernised has a really nice flavour. Art Deco with the old dark woods that are just too full on actually can, um, again, they can actually really detract from selling to the masses. In fact, only those people who are real Art Deco fans will, will be super keen to buy that kind of premises. So be careful with Art Deco. But done well, like the bank at Cronulla, it's just, that's just a beautiful building and really, really, you know, makes my heart go like that every time I walk past it. Okay, industrial, rustic, boho and shabby. I put them all together, even though obviously they're different designs and styles. But I lumped them together because, and I gave them a number 10. If you're trying to sell for more, you're trying to create the lifestyle, you're trying to attract people, you're trying to um, sell the opulence, the whole, uh, you, you want to change the price point. And I think if you get too in, stuck into the industrial and the rustic and the shabby kind of feel, although it's quirky and it's groovy and cafes do it really, really well, so do commercial spaces, 
it's really cute to be in, but when it comes to the sales price, which is what we're after, I've, I've listed that last. So if you're going to go there, just do touches of it here and there, perhaps in a little bit of furnishing, but just don't go all out because it actually doesn't create a feeling of opulence, lifestyle, wealth, whatever. People just don't go for it. Okay, so how do you put all of these looks together if you've got no idea of what you're doing? There's a couple of ways. Firstly, Pinterest and Instagram are your go-tos. Like get, get online and have a look at what people are doing. And just like I said before, you pull apart those photographs of things that really draw your eye. You have in your mind what you're dealing with, the property that you've bought or are about to renovate. And you look at photographs and you're looking for stuff that's of a similar vibe but it's a modern version, something where a designer's done something really beautiful or just a home renovator's got some photos up there and that, or some people selling cushions and homewares. You're looking for the same kind of flavour of house, the same style, but in a more modern version. And you're pulling the elements out of this more modern version and you're applying them to your unrenovated house. That's it in a nutshell. But to put it all together, you're probably going to have to create some mood boards so that every time you go shopping, you're not distracted by all the beautiful things and you don't head off style. So a really great place to do your own mood boards and also to look at the amazing creation from other designers is starsourcebook.com.au. You jump on and have a look if you haven't had a look at that site it's incredible you can have a look at bathrooms already put together with the taps and the tiles already done by Australia's designers really like that site so go and have a look if you haven't had a like a look at that site you know lounge rooms bedrooms like all kind of pieced together and then you can source the materials from there I think that's a great spot you can also do your own mood boards um, for the facades and for bigger stuff, like doing your interior designs, you can't beat learning SketchUp. You can't beat it. If you're serious at being an interior designer or at interior designs, or you just love playing in the space and you want to learn more, or if you wanted to learn how to do front facades and maybe sell your designs to people online. If you want to learn how to do interior design and you, you want to make that your career, or you want to do um, anything in relation to changing the designs of houses if you're a renovator and you're serious measuring up rooms working out what kitchens can go where you cannot be learning SketchUp if you try and do it on your own it's tricky if you work alongside my coach Chris Smith he is amazing not only is he an expert at SketchUp but he's a really lovely guy he's got patience to the moon and uh, he's an interior designer himself with oodles of architectural and in interior design experience. So he can help you with designs along the way. If you're interested on this next slide, I'll show you the link. Just book a call with me and I'll talk about what your needs might be. But honestly, guys, you can't get past renovating at a higher level earning more money, doing better designs, creating better outcomes, taking it really seriously, not just doing what you think, but really taking it to a highly educated level um, and, and earning more profit and making it easier by, you know, some, some more courses and broadening your education along the way. And, and Chris Smith is amazing and so is learning SketchUp. It is a game changer. All right, so... Thank you for joining me today. Keep following along at the Mums and Dads Renovators and Decorators Group. If you'd like to work with me, um, book a call, renovateandrealestate.com.au forward slash call is the link. Let me know where you are in your own journey, like where you're at. Are you just beginning and terrified? Have, are you looking at photos like that and going, okay, Belinda, you just showed us what we need to do, but I still don't really know how to put it together. If you want to learn how to put it together, exactly what to do in order and in steps, then you come and work with me. There are three ways. You can either learn to renovate with us at Renovate and Real Estate. You can renovate alongside one of our experienced renovation uh, coaches and, and I can talk to you about what that looks like. Or you can learn to renovate for a living. You can turn your passion for renovation into a career for life. So thanks for joining me again, guys. I will see you next Tuesday at 12 midday Sydney time. 12 midday Sydney time in this mums and dads group. You can also catch the replays here under guides. And beyond that, you can catch some video content 
of this kind of stuff and also some other stuff, other interviews and things that I've done on YouTube at Renovate and Real Estate. Bye, guys. See you next week. <laughs>